and uh, I'm going to explain to you about fertility and pregnancy, uh, predominantly in thalassemia, and at the end I will touch on sickle cell as well. Okay. Uh, most importantly. Okay, in thalassemia major is the main problem. Okay, I will divide them into three compartments. First, I will talk about thalassemia major, then thalassemia intermedia, then thalassemia trait, and then at the end, cover sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease pregnancy problem is very similar to thal major. Therefore, I will just highlight the important difference at the end. Okay, the most important problem in thal major patient. It is very good that my hematologist colleagues, they are looking after them very well. So they are living longer and they want to have a family. And that's very good news. But unfortunately, because in their early childhood or in near the puberty and adolescence, they were not very compliant with their uh, chelation therapy or they didn't took their drug very well. So there was some extra iron in their body. And that extra iron actually caused damage to a small gland in your head, which is called pituitary gland. And once that gland is damaged, then what happens is that you cannot have a spontaneous pregnancy. Okay? So that is the first concept you have to understand. So the main problem is damage to the pituitary gland, which Dr. Chatterjee told you quite clearly. But the good news is your gonads are intact. So both ovary and testis have undergone sleep, okay? So they are sleeping. Because the pituitary was not working, so they are all, both of them are sleeping. So now we can do something to help you to become pregnant. Our job is a lot easier, okay? So this is the picture which will, I will try to explain to you. Okay, this is the, okay, here is the uh, pituitary gland. You can see that it is a pituitary gland. This pituitary gland normally produces two types of hormones and that hormone actually go down and act on the gonad. Here is the ovary, okay? And so when this hormone act on the ovary, then the egg is released. And that egg, once it is released, then it can get fertilized and you can become pregnant. But as your pituitary gland is damaged, so those hormones are not liberated. Therefore, there is no egg is produced from the ovary and therefore you cannot become pregnant. You understand the concept is very simple. All right, now if you come to me, what I can do? There are three choices you have got. First choice is that please take your chelation therapy, okay? Get rid of your iron, because with a lot of iron in your body, you can't become pregnant, okay? As a doctor, I can't do anything until you if your iron status is corrected, because that is bad news in, during pregnancy. Right? So you have to take your chelation so that although it will not cure your pituitary damage, but it will help you during pregnancy and it will help you to become pregnant. Right? Second thing is that either you do nothing or adopt a child, which of course is not an ideal thing, which is very easy for us to say, all right, that's good. My pituitary is damaged. I can't do anything. I will just go to the adoption center and adopt a child. And the third thing is that do nothing and cry at home. Okay? <laughs> that I can't become pregnant because I have got a thalassemia. Alright? Choice is yours. But the last one is come to me or go to a gynecologist. Okay? So choice, I've given you four choices. Alright? Not one, but four. If you decide to come to a gynecologist, then what the gynecologist is going to do? Because I know that your pituitary is damaged, all right, here, so I, and it cannot produce the hormone, and I also know that if it ovary or the testis is intact, therefore what I'm going to do, I can give you hormones, okay, which is normally produced by the pituitary gland, so those hormones are now going to act on your ovary, and that will make it produce an egg or a sperm, I will come to the male factor in a minute, okay, and that will help you to become pregnant. You understand the concept? Okay? And now, it is very easy, isn't it? The way I put it, it's very easy. Just go and get two jabs and you become pregnant. 
Unfortunately, life is not that simple. All right? There is no magic jack. Okay? So, you know, that, that process is a little bit complicated. Here, we need to work as a team. If you want to have a family and want to uh, live a normal life, you need to work hard. The first thing I told you, you need to get rid of your extra iron from the body. So you have to take your drugs properly. Okay? The most important thing is that when you come for the treatment, we will assess the patient first. We'll look at the whole picture. And that is what we call pre-pregnancy counseling. Okay, I will come to that chapter in the second half of my talk. Okay, so first for the infertility purpose, what we do, we uh, once we have assessed the patient that that patient is suitable to become a mother, then we start the treatment. The treatment in uh, girls are much easier than boys. Always remember, boys are more difficult to handle. Okay, <laughs> and that is true even in case of fertility. They need more help, more support, more pampering, okay? So that is the true for the uh, female, uh, for the fertility issue. So I'm going to cover the first, the easy bit, which is how to treat uh, the fertility problem in a female or in girls. In girls, what we do, we first assess them. Then we, if they are taking hormone replacement therapy, we ask them to discontinue that at least for a month, if not for six weeks. The idea behind is that once you are off the hormone replacement therapy, then we can assess the endocrine status as a baseline. So that gives us a very good idea what is your normal baseline hormone level. Okay, then we do a pelvic ultrasound scan, check your ovaries, check the uterus and make sure they are okay. And then of course, in normal fertility, if you want to become pregnant, the egg needs to travel through the tube and reach the uh, uterus. In thalassemic patients, normally it is our, our practice that we don't do the tubal test because we think that in most of the cases the tubes are patent. So we don't want to subject you to an unnecessary test. Okay? And it is very important to check out your husband or a partner because it's no good to give you the jabs and then realize that your husband is infertile too, okay? And that can happen. So that will be total waste of resources. So as a rule, a rule of thumb, we always do the check on the husband or the partner. We first do make sure that he is not a carrier of him, uh, any hemoglobin, the whether fetal or thin, because it will be really a disaster that you induce a pregnancy and found out that the baby is affected, okay? So that is the first thing. Second thing, we do a semen analysis test and we make sure that he's producing the adequate amount of uh, the sperm. Then what we do, we tend to counsel the patient regarding the risk of this therapy because any treatment has got an associated problem, all right? So even if you go for a blood test, you may have a, a blue uh, a patch around there if you mark. So same thing happens here. If I give you a drug, these drugs are quite potent actually. The way I put it actually is very easy, but it's not that simple. These drugs can cause harm as well. So we need to counsel you very well that although I'm going to give you the injection, it's a very good chance that it will work, but there is a risk that it may not work. So the patient should be aware that when I'm going through this therapy, at the end of the month, you may have a negative news. Okay? So psychological counseling and awareness is very important. Second thing what happens is that the patient can become pregnant and then you may have a spontaneous miscarriage, just like anybody else. Okay? So they should be aware of that. Because once you become pregnant, you, think, you start thinking about having a baby. But there is a small chance that miscarriage can happen. So we do a very thorough counseling with the patient before we start the therapy. Okay, and of course there is a risk of multiple pregnancy. Most of our patients say, oh it is good, buy one get one free. So there is a problem. Okay, but of course there is a problem. When you get a buy one get one free, that may cause you a problem. Because multiple pregnancy, carrying a twin may cause some health problem to the mother. Okay? So we try to avoid creating multiple births. So what is the process? 
process is very simple. Once I have decided that we are going to treat you, we give two types of injection. One injection, I am not going to go into different names, which is called HMG or Pargonel. This injection is quite expensive, the therapy is quite expensive, and it needs very close monitoring. So it is not like that you give a course of injection and send you home and ask you to come back at the end of the month. We need to monitor you every other day. And the monitoring is usually done by using ultrasound scan and also doing a blood test for a hormone called estrogen. Okay? So what we do is uh, we use two different types of regime. Either we start with a high dose and then reduce the dose, okay, depending upon the result of the monitoring. Or we start with a low dose and it's gradually built on the dose depending upon the result of the ultrasound scan. Here you can see that there is one big follicle. For our aim is with this injection to develop this type of scan picture where there will be one big nice follicle. Okay? So if there are more than one follicle, we don't like to give the second drug because then you will get a multiple work. If there is uh, one follicle but it is not big, then we will try to abandon the cycle, we won't proceed any further. So once this cycle is achieved, then we give the second injection, which will help you to release the eggs from the inside that uh, big follicle. You understand what I am trying to get at? And once the egg is released, then of course you can achieve a pregnancy. So this is the protocol, and using this protocol we get very good results in patients with thalassemic major. The reason is I explained to you early, because the damage is in the pituitary, damage is not in the ovary, not in the uterus. So they respond very well to the therapy. Like in UCL, we did the 26 pregnancy we achieved by this method, and it's a very good success rate. But in a few cases, like about, I would say about 80% success rate, provided we must select the patient properly, conceal them properly, and monitor the cycle properly. What we do is that in the remaining, where uh, they, they don't achieve pregnancy, we try for three cycles. We don't go beyond three cycles. Very rarely we try for more than three. Okay? And now you can ask me what will happen to those where it didn't work. So the second line choice is very simple. Take the egg, take the sperm, put it in the test tube, mix it and you get a baby. What is what we call test tube baby. Okay? So that is the second line treatment. So in the first line treatment we don't do this because it is not required in majority of the patient. It's only a small number you need to go through what we call IVF. Okay? So in the IVF we do something very similar. There are three stages. First stage is same to what I just explained to you that we need to give you the two injection, create the uh, egg and then that is the picture I am showing. Here you can see you have got more than one big thing. Here the aim is to create more than one. We want 10 or 12 women. So in one cycle if I can get 10 or 12 eggs, it is very good. Because I can keep it. You understand what I mean? Not for anything else but for the future cycle. So once this is achieved, then what we do is treat the egg under ultrasound scan in the uh, operating theater. And then we put the sperm, fertilize the egg, and then we replace them back into the uterus. Okay? And to achieve what we call a successful outcome to the baby. Okay? So this is the second line choice. Now let's look at what happened in the male. I told you earlier on, uh, just before I started, in boys the treatment is more difficult. Okay? Because the physiology is like that. Okay? The damage is again same in the pituitary gland. The testis is usually spared. So the, the, the damage is exactly the same. But treatment becomes more cumbersome. Why? Because we follow the same protocol in male as well. We will counsel them. We will take them off the uh, hormone replacement therapy. We will do the baseline test. We will investigate the wife or the partner and then we will start what we call induction of spermatogenesis. What happened here in May, you have to understand, to produce a sperm, it is a very long drawn process. It is not going to happen every month. So to have one cycle, you need three, good three months, 
okay? And the treatment is very slow to work. And there are two different stages. First stage, we give the same hormone, but we give it to the girls, but we give it in another order. The second drug which we gave in the girls will start the boys with that first.